Hello everyone, Harry Bulldog here, editor at Total Telecom. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Adam Hotchkiss, Head of Customer Solutions and Integration at Plume Design. And we're here to talk about the smart home market and more specifically about the security challenges that the market is facing right now. Adam, thanks for speaking to me today. Yep, thanks and pleasure to talk to you today. The IoT is expanding rapidly and of course, more connected devices means more points of access for potential security threats. Uh, this is as true for the home as it is in business, yet we rarely hear of home-specific security solutions. Why is this and what unique security challenges does the home network present for security? There's two things related to that with the unique challenges that need to be solved. Uh, one is the reason why we don't see, I think, very many solutions out on the market for home security is that they're very difficult for the consumer to shop and decide which one to buy for. And the consumer also, I think, doesn't have a clear understanding about whose responsibility is it really to protect their home and devices. Is it the manufacturer who sold them the IoT device? Is it the service provider who's, who's providing them the service? Or is it something that's, that's led to them to kind of find a solution and implement? Um, so the more we can make that the, an automatic and kind of right that the consumer has to have their home protected, which, which we believe is through the service provider, um, then that decision becomes much easier for them. Uh, the second thing is it's a very difficult um, solution, point solution to provide. So if you have, for example, um, a laptop like we're talking on here today versus a coffee maker, which makes you coffee, both can be vulnerable to um, to attacks. Both can can kind of wreak havoc within within your home, but both require very, very different solutions on, on how to handle them because they behave very, very differently. Um, so for the consumer standpoint, understanding how to protect the coffee maker as well as their laptop um, leads them down two totally different paths. And at Plume, we believe the protection should come from the network layer, which is what we specialize in. So you don't really have to worry, is it a coffee maker, is it a light switch, is it a laptop? All that protection will be provided at the, at the network, layer, at network layer for your entire home. As you mentioned there, a major challenge is going to be securing the growing number of independent connected devices that we're all going to have in our homes in the next few years. How does Plume solve this issue of numerous diverse devices? There's there's two two aspects uh, to this. One is no matter what the device is, um, once you install it in your home, it will at one point become invulnerable, and we really can't rely on the device maker to keep everything up to date, such as you know firmware updates or, or changes to their to their code in order to make things um, totally secure. So these vulnerabilities, as they come, you need a system which can adapt over time to it. And, and that's where we, we spend our, our effort is to make sure we can understand the behavior of all the devices in the home, um, see the signatures that cause uh, um, attacks within the home and lock them, and then make that always up to date. Um, so our cloud system will continuously update the algorithms to make sure that there's no lapse, let's say, within the security offering that's available to the consumer. Um, the second part is about expanding the scope of the type of security that can be offered. So, um, so as the time goes on, new uh, information becomes available to us that we can use to expand our offering. Then we add that to the cloud system and update the, the security offering. So for example, in, in, in the, the most simplest terms in day one, you may have things like DNS and IP address and traffic flows that are monitored um, to understand the, the, the device behavior. Um, things that you can add and layer on top of that is, is now related to application, what applications are running on that device, should it be allowed, should it not, is it normal, is it not, and, and that adds another layer. So the goal here uh, of us is to continuously add more and more layers onto the security to make it more difficult for, for attackers and hacks to occur within the home. At Plume, you're leveraging some of the latest technologies in your security solutions, including AI and machine learning. Can you tell us a little bit more about how this process works? So for, for IoT devices, the account is expanding at an ever rapid pace, and it's really difficult to, to, to keep up with all the different types of devices that are coming out into the market in terms of are those vendors safe or not, and the consumer is probably not going to research um, for the latest light switch that they see pop up on Amazon uh, you know, for a special, is it secure, is it not secure, there's no kind of independent study you can do. Um, so that's where we come in. So we can keep up with all these different devices that are coming on the market because we, we see more devices than anybody um, in the world on our, on our cloud system. Um, and then based upon those hundreds of millions of devices that we see, we're able to learn the behavior of each device. So anytime a device gets uh, plugged into the network, it'll start sending traffic, making calls, talking to different servers, running different applications that, that make up its, its service. And when we see enough of those devices show up, we can build a, a profile related to that. And that's where the AI machine learning tools come in to, to build these profiles and to self-teach it 
the, what's a normal behavior and what's an anomaly. And then when we see anomaly, we have a threat analysis that's done on that anomaly. And then we can inform the user of what the anomaly is and also quarantine it to make sure it doesn't affect the rest of the network. So, so this level of service is really a, kind of a, a bespoke or customized service that we offer for all these different types of IoT devices. And it's, it's always learning and changing in our, in our network. What are the main security threats people face on their home networks and how can these be overcome? Main threat is when adding many devices to the network, especially IoT devices. Um, there, there really isn't a, a set standard or a way to make sure that these devices are secure, and we 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 definitely in, enjoy the fact that IoT devices are coming at a, a fast and furious pace, and we're adding them to our network. And just in my network alone, in my house, I have almost 100 devices connected to it, um, and and that's expected to, to continuously grow. You've seen the expectations of billions of IoT devices connected in in, in the network, and and we certainly don't see that slowing down. Um, so, so from that aspect, I, I, I think it's from the consumer side, you shouldn't have to worry. You shouldn't have to say, well, you know, I, I shouldn't buy this or I should buy this one um, because I, I trust or don't trust the vendor. We, we know that consumers are going to buy every device that kind of fits their needs and put it in. Over time, those devices will probably become less secure. So after five years of installing the device, it's, gonna, it's probably going to become less secure than the day you installed it, unless that vendor is keeping up with updates and, and upgrading it. So, so that's where we uh, come in to play. Um, for any device that maybe lapses on updates or, or the uh, IoT vendor has kind of moved on to the next version and stopped supporting the previous one, we're always watching and building our models and making sure that things are secure. So even if the, the consumer you know, doesn't realize or know that their device has fallen out of, out of favor with, with uh, firmware and security updates, um, we'll watch from the network. And if we do see these anomalies, uh, detect them and block them. And, and so you can have this kind of lifelong relationship with us as long as we're, we're, we're providing the service that the devices will stay secure as we update the cloud to, to take up for the deficiencies of the IoT devices in the network. You note in your security guide that many customers don't feel knowledgeable when it comes to the digital security of their devices. How important is consumer knowledge and how do you see that education improving? So the responsibility of who should protect the network is the first thing that we have to that we have to solve. Um, and, and in our view, this is this is for the, the service provider really should offer this as a, a base service to all the customers that the network is secure. And when, when the service provider takes on this responsibility, then the education of the benefits and, and how the, the system is working to the, to the consumer becomes much easier. Like half the battle is just understanding who's responsible for protecting my network. Once you understand that, then, then you know where to go for the, the source of information. Um, the second part is about putting the information available to the consumer within uh, the mobile app interface so they can see how many threats were blocked, which devices were, were um, generating the threats, uh, and, and what the threats actually were and how they can go remediate those threats if it's something that they can do. Um, so that's where the mobile app interface becomes really important to, to help that, um, the, to help the knowledge uh, transfer to the consumer about what's going on in their home, which is different than their neighbor's home. Um, I don't really expect, and, and I think from the consumer side, it, it takes too much time to become knowledgeable on all the exact security threats that are coming out into the, into the network. So I think having the peace of mind that if you are subscribing to the security service, the security service is showing you the threats that are being blocked and giving you information on it, and then having a, a pledge from the service provider and from vendors like Plume to, to update and maintain and, and make sure that we're adding these additional layers of security over time with the cloud-based service, um, then you can have more of a kind of peace of mind type of um, field. I, I have security, it's backed by Plume, it has some of the, the greatest threat intelligence um, on the planet uh, feeding us, then you can feel secure that you're buying from this vendor and you really don't need to spend much more time um, you know, reading through these articles about the different types of security threats and what exactly it means for you and your devices because we'll, we'll take care of that part for, for you. As the smart home market matures, CSPs will be looking to expand their portfolio and offer new digital products and services. Uh, what advice do you have for CSPs when it comes to their approach to security for these new offerings? So the, I think that this is kind of split into the, some of the questions that we, we answered previously, but I think the, the most important thing is to take ownership of securing the home. Um, so once that decision is made, then the product offerings that follow become, become uh, more obvious. Um, once the decision is made to provide that, that security offering to the customer, 
um, then we need to now give it to everybody 100%. So anytime you sign up for the service, you're 100% going to be protected with the network level service, and that's going to continue on as a kind of a, a basic right, if you will, of, of network. So you, you should have flawless connectivity. You should have uh, security that's protected from, from the cloud and the network la layer, and you should be able to control what's happening in your home in terms of uh, parental controls or guests coming in or understand what's uh, happening from an awareness perspective of your house. So, so we see these as kind of like the, a bill of rights, if you will, for any internet user coming from the service provider. And then once this is adopted from the service provider, then it becomes much easier to kind of differentiate from offering a, a dumb pipe, which is what we all want to avoid. Um, and I think security is a major piece in, in that part and, and consumers definitely can uh, um, can uh, latch onto that as, as a reason for buying from one service provider to, from, from another who just offers a dumb pipe. Um, so we, we benefit from this, uh, not just uh, personally, but also the service provider raising their, their prices. Adam, thanks very much for taking the time to speak to me.